want to welcome you to our evangelistic service this evening and say a very thank you for taking the time out to be here. You know, you could have chosen to be anywhere else, but you chose to come to the house of the Lord. So we want to say thank you for taking that special effort to be here this evening. And to those that are viewing online as well, we trust that as the service continues, you will receive a blessing. And thank you also for tuning in online. Before we go any further, we're going to ask the Lord's blessings on the service. And we would like to ask you to reverently stand, and I'm going to ask Sister McLaughlin if she would come and lead us to the throne of grace. Thank you, Lord, for your blessings on us, dear God. As we quiet ourselves before you, dear Father, we just want to give you thanks. We just want to praise you. We just want to honor you, dear God, and glorify your name. Because you are King of kings and Lord of lords. Dear God, you are God over all, in all, and through us all. You have been with us in our going out and our coming in. Almighty God, you have given your angel charge over us, dear Father. We are nothing of ourselves, dear God, but all that we are, dear Lord, is through you, dear God. So we bow down before you, dear Father, because you are worthy, you are worthy, you are worthy. Almighty God, thank you, dear Father. We pray, dear Lord, that you may sanctify this meeting tonight, dear God, to your honor, to your praise, and to your glory. We pray, dear God, that your spirit will lift a standard, dear God, against every plan of the enemy, dear Lord, and render him powerless, dear God. Amen. Father, we pray, dear Lord, that every foul and contrary spirit, dear God, may be scattered, dear Lord, and that your Holy Spirit, dear Father, may have liberty, dear God, because where the Spirit of God is, there is liberty, dear Father. So, Almighty God, move from the pulpit to the pew, dear God. And be with us tonight, dear Lord, like none other, dear Father. Almighty God, we thank you for those that have put this service together, dear Lord. Yes. We pray, dear God, that you may touch each lips, dear Father. Purify each heart, dear God. And let it be done to your honor and to your glory. Yes. Remember the chairperson of her remarked way, dear God. Yes. Be with her, dear Lord, and help her through, dear Father. Yes. Almighty God, we sit at your footstool waiting, dear Lord, for all that you have for us, dear God. So bless us now, dear Lord, and bless every heart that is waiting, dear God. In the mighty name of Jesus, we say thank you. Amen. Amen. You know, as the song that they ended with said just now, although we're not worthy of the blessings he gives, we'll always be thankful. And you know, each and every one of us have something here to be thankful for tonight, and those watching online as well. There is something, don't care how small it is, that we can give God thanks for, and we should seek each day to give God thanks for something, because truly, you know, when he was on the cross, we were on his mind, and if it was only me, if it was only you, he still would have gone to Calvary. So we want to thank God tonight for his great faithfulness and his mercies that's renewed to each and every one of us each day. So we're going to begin our congregational singing this evening and we're going to ask you all to stand and we're going to sing, I have decided to follow Jesus. And Sister KK will leave because I make a joyful noise. I don't sing. Let us stand. I have decided to follow
That was beautiful singing. And you know, if you haven't decided to follow Jesus, you're in the right place. Yes. And you know, God doesn't do anything by chance. So you'll have an opportunity tonight, if you haven't decided, to make that decision, that all-important choice tonight as we go through the service. So I'm going to invite you at this time, if you have your Bibles, and it'll be on the screen as well, we will be reading together in unison Psalms 46. Okay, let us begin. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore will not we fear, though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea. Though the waters are of war and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof. There is a river, the streams whereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her, and that right early. The heathen rage, the kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice, the earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Come behold the works of the Lord. What desolations he hath made in the earth. He maketh wars to cease unto the end of the earth. He breaketh the bow and cutteth the spear in sunder. He burneth the chariot in the fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. We thank the Lord for his word and the promises of his holy book. May the Lord continue to add a blessing. The Lord of hosts is with us. Yes. I wonder if we believe that tonight. Yes. The Lord of hosts is with us. And God is our refuge. Yes. And Brother James spoke from Psalms 27 today. And you know, God is speaking to his people. Yes. This is his love letter to us, the word. Yes. You know, and he says he's with us. He's our refuge. So I want us to take comfort in that tonight. And, you know, Revelations chapter 12, verse 11 says that, and they overcame him by the word of their testimony. And I wonder, tonight as we go through this, this service, Revelation 12 and 11 says, and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto death. Tonight we're going to hear some testimonies from a variety of people. And I pray that you would pay keen attention to them as they share with you what the Lord has done for them. Because we know that God is good. Not sometime, all the time. And sometimes when we're going through things and when things happen to us in our lives, we don't understand it when we're going through it. Sometimes it's after while we're communing and meditating on his word that he revealed to us certain things. And we're so thankful to God for his love and his willingness to condescend to men of low estate. So I pray that you'd open your hearts and your mind this evening as you listen to these testimonies, and I know that you will be blessed. So before I go any further, I would like to call our first person to speak, and that will be Sister Karen Christian. And I really love Sister Karen because she's, she has this very quiet and calm disposition about her and I remember the first time when I met Sister Emily and then when I met Sister Karen I looked at her I said oh you just like your mommy she spoke just like her mommy and she had the same disposition so I thank God that I'm a part of this family and I love we're all very different and and that's the God that we serve you know and I love my brothers and sisters and Sister Karen may God continue to bless you as you come and you share your testimony with us tonight I prefer cheering. <laughs> Good evening, church. We open the service with, I have decided to follow Jesus. Well, 16 years ago, I made that choice. 
and it's certainly a grand thing to be a Christian. The book of James, chapter 5, verse 16, b says, The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous person availeth much. In yesterday's prayer meeting, Sister Virginia spoke on Nehemiah, and she took the, her thoughts from chapter 1, verses 1 to 5, reminding us that no matter how hard things get, we are to keep on praying. Yeah. I stand before you tonight because of the prayers of my mother. When she gave her heart to the Lord, she was a prayer warrior. She prayed fervently for her children. It took some time, but she never gave up. I have learned over the years that life is indeed a cycle. My parents raised us. My mom decided what we ate decided on our well-being, and even gave us medicine we didn't like. I remember the castor oil and the herb tea, and uh, I just, just thinking about it. Now, we, as daughters, take care of her. And without a doubt, we could not do this without the help of the Lord. We decide what she eats. We encourage her to take her medication when she doesn't want to, and the list goes on. The exhortation yesterday reminded me of the importance of persevering in prayer. Not just praying, persevering. We have to pray with all of our heart, just like Nehemiah did, and keep on building. The building of the wall there was a tool in one hand and a weapon in the other. For us, our tool and our weapon is our shield of faith and our perseverance in prayer. Praying with all of our heart for our children, our grandchildren, and even our beautiful Cayman Islands. Yes. Ephesians chapter 4 verses 14 and 15 tells us, we are no longer to be children tossed to and fro and carried away by every wind of doctrine, but we are to speak in the truth in love, that we may grow and become in every respect mature and more like Christ. In order for us to do this, we have to follow Paul's advice in Ephesians 6, 11, and 12. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we fight not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. I'm thankful that my mom carried out the instruction of the wise man Solomon when he says in Proverbs 22.6, Train up a child in the way they should go, and when they are old, they will not depart from it. We might have wavered, but it was always in our heart, and we never departed. The psalmist David tells us in Psalms 119.11, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you. And while we were in the world, when we were doing something that we knew that we weren't supposed to be doing, those scriptures came back to us. Because we were taught in Sunday school, and we know what was right from wrong. When we became old enough, and we comprehended what treasure we had, we embraced it. As parents, especially mothers, if we don't stand strong in prayer for our children, grandchildren, and our community, they don't have a chance. The devil is raging. He don't miss anyone. No matter how strong you think you may be, or no matter how weak you are, the devil is preying on everyone. So let us fervently pray and know that our unfailing God is willing and able to help us. But we have to be true to him. In closing, Nehemiah 1 and 4 tells us that before Nehemiah made any decision, Nehemiah wept, Nehemiah mourned, 
Nehemiah fasted and Nehemiah prayer, prayed before God in each of those situations. Sometimes praying alone ain't going to help us. We need to do more. I pray that as I work with my church brothers and sisters, that we can do the work of the Lord and we can hold strong to his guidance and his protection, that one day we can all make heaven our home. As the songwriter says, when we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. Thank you and God bless. Thank you very much, Sister Carey. You know, one thing was continuous through Sister Carey's testimony, and that was the importance of prayer. And we can't overstress the importance of prayer and praying consistently, as the Bible says, you know, praying without ceasing. And I love the fact that she brought out how her mother took care of them and now they take care of her. And that's important because, you know, there's a lot, there are a lot of seniors in our community that don't have that care. And, and it's not that people aren't capable, it's just that they're neglected and they're just not cared for. So, Sister Karen, thank you for, you know, bringing that out there. And I'm sure that that has blessed someone. And she told us about putting on the whole armor and keeping on the whole armor. And that's very important, yes. We need to do that in order to fight against the devil. And just in case um, you may have forgotten, you know, none of us are in a match for the devil on our own. None of us, saved or unsaved, there's two very powerful beings out there. And we know that God is almighty. Don't ever think that you're in a match on the devil, for the devil on your own. You know, if you think about the boxers that get into the ring and they get punched up and all sorts of stuff happen to them, don't go in the ring with the devil. Maybe you, might, maybe you have to stay outside of the ring and throw little scriptures and throw little punches and throw little things inside. Don't go in the ring. Mm -mm -mm. We don't know much for him on our own. We have to put on and keep on the whole armor. And yes, the devil is raging. But we're so thankful that greater is he that's in us than he that is in the world. Thank God for his promises and the truth of his word this evening. At this time, we would like to invite the Honduran group that will come and bring a song for us, and after that, that will be followed by a solo by Sister Georgia. Mm We have an honorary Honduranian. <laughs> I was alone an idol. I was a sinner too. I heard a voice from heaven. Saying there is what to do I took my master hand And I joined the heavenly man Now I'm on the battlefield for my Lord Oh yes, I'm on the battlefield for my Lord Yes, I'm on the battlefield for my Lord Oh, 
Do I need a chorus?
encouraged yes. already and we're not even halfway through the service yet so you should all feel blessed and good I, I feel really good you know Sister Karen spoke about the whole armor and then we had the wonderful Honorian brethren that sung on the battlefield for the Lord and you know when I read quite a bit of success stories and you, you read about how people acquire their wealth it, it's it's never an easy road that's paved, you know. And I even think about it in our local community here, and yes, brother, we're gonna pick on you. And I think of, you know, the company that his father started, and I think of where he started it from, and the hardships that he had to go through to what we see today. It's not something that's easy. And I think of people like Frankie Flowers, and where, his, where they started, and you look at that today, and, and even reading, the book, you know, Against All Odds, and I think about Dear Brother Norman, and, and, you, and you look at them today, and you realize the hardships that they went through. It, it's, it's about, you're not going to get to heaven in a rocking chair. You're not going to just glide in there easy. And you know, as parents, you have children, and, and they, they get out of school, and you have to buy little things for them to go back to school to make sure that they're, you know, they have everything that they need. Yeah, we're on the battlefield for the Lord, but we have the whole armor. He don't call us and save us and say, yeah, go figure it out on your own. No. He gives us the resources right. and the tools that we need to be successful That's on the right. battlefield. Yeah. So we thank God for that tonight. And yes, Sister George, Ann, I'm thankful that God reached down for me and I'm thankful for his mercies. And I'm so thankful that I was included in his plan. All of us. Yes. And included in his plan. And you know what his word tells us? He will it not the soul of a sinner. He wants to see all of us come to repentance yeah. and the peace of mind that you get from God. The Bible tells you the world can't give it, Jesus. the That's world right. can't That's take right. it away. Right. And we're so I'm thankful tonight for those promises in his holy book. And you know, she said her eyes are open and now we can see. Yes. You know, you think you can see, we all, we're, we're, none of us are blind, you know, you can see, you think you can see, but then when you meet Christ and your eyes are really open, yeah. You see all the evil in the world. Yes. But then you see Christ. Yes. And you see him high and lifted up. Yes. And you know who he is. Yes. You know what he do what he's done. And what he's capable of doing. Right. So yes, your eyes are now open. And even though you can see all the evil and you can see different things in the world, you have Christ Amen. in you. And you can love. And you see things from a different perspective. So we thank God that he opened our eyes that we can see that irrespective of what may happen, we can love God, Amen. we can serve him, and we can go to him in prayer and reach out to him with whatever we have, knowing that he will comfort us and he will hear us and he will answer us. So thank God for those songs. And right now I'm going to introduce Sister Romalia, and she has an object lesson for us. I'm excited to see what this is. Good night, church. Amen. Troubles and cares of this life. Every day we are faced with challenges and obstacles that can help us grow and defile us. When cares of this world come in, it can make things quite impossible. It can even paralyze us from doing things that needs to be done. This glass of water represents hate, fear, lust, envy, jealousy, greed, covetousness, pride, gossip, and such as, which tends to weigh us down. In return, these weights tend to make us dark, grumpy, sad, and miserable. Holding this glass filled with all these troubles and cares 
carries weight. The more I hold into and the more I hold onto it, the more my hand gets tired, weak, numb, paralyzed, and then starts to hurt. The weight of this glass doesn't change, but the longer I hold onto it, the heavier it becomes. Always remember, put the glass down. In Matthew 11, 23, verse 28 to 30, states, come, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavily laden, meaning weighted down, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your soul. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. The meaning of Matthew 10, verse 28 to 30, shows us God's intention for us is not to weigh us down but to give us rest. Therefore, by reading and understanding the word of God, we can overcome these things as Philippians 4 verse 13 states, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Therefore, we need to, we need to be prayerful and put all our weight down at the feet of Jesus. Yeah. Amen. Thank you very much for that, Sister Amelia, and that's a very timely reminder. And the gist of it is, sin weighs us down. Yes. But you know, as I sat there and I was listening to Sister Amelia, I put on my glasses because I had to see the two items, because they looked so beautiful. Yeah. And I remember Brother James' message this morning about being, about beautiful, and things that are beautiful, and you know, he mentioned in his message this morning that there's people that may look pretty on the outside, but you don't know what's going on on the inside. And when I looked at the two items she had here and how beautiful they were, you may see people and you may take people for face value because they may look beautiful and pretty on the outside, but you don't know how way down they are with sin. And tonight I want to encourage you, you know, like Sister Romelia said, his yoke is easy and his burden is light. He doesn't want us to be weighed down. Amen. He wants to free us up. Yes. And you know, the Bible tells us that we must try our best to live peaceably with all men. Yes. But truth be told, some people really miserable in this world. Yes. It's it, it hard, it's not easy, yes. you, you, it's not everybody that you can live peaceably with. But you still have to go to yes. all extreme and all extent to try. Yes. You know? And you may know that you're miserable and disagreeable and trying to do something about it, can't do anything about it. Maybe that's what's missing from your life. You're so weighed down by sin and so much things, you need to be, you need to free yourself a little bit and you need God's help to free you. So I want to encourage you tonight, those of you that are in the sanctuary and even those that are listening online, there's only one unpardonable sin. That, you know how much things you can do and the Lord will still forgive you? You can still come to him. As Brother Ray says all the time, when he preached, it's not complicated, you know. Yeah. We're the ones who complicate it, yes. you know. You don't have to complicate it. You don't have to overanalyze it. It's easy, you know. You need the Lord. We can't make it through this life without him. And if you've come this far, it's because somebody has been praying for you somewhere down the line. Amen. Something has been sustaining you. So don't think it's you and, and, and be self-reliant and self-dependent. We all need the Lord. Yes. So I'm going to give some announcements and ask for some prayer requests at this time. But let me do the announcements first. On Wednesday evening, we have a young people's service, which begins at 7 p.m. And I'd like to invite each and every one of you to come back to that because it's very encouraging, uplifting, and it's usually, it's always something different. So you will be blessed. And on Saturday, we have our prayer meeting at 5.30 p.m very important meeting and it's something that you know a church the church needs to pray yeah. and 
we pray together and we also pray individually. So I'd also like you like to invite you to come back to that as well on Saturday evening. And Sunday our services are normal with nine thirty for Sunday school and morning worship at eleven a.m. Yeah. Nine forty five. Okay. I stand corrected. Nine forty five. We have our Sunday school and then we have our morning worship service at eleven a.m. And then our evangelistic service at 7 p.m. with chorus singing at 6.45. So please free to come back out and be with us at any one of these services. I know you will receive a warm Christian welcome and Amen. you will be blessed. Amen. Now I'm going to ask if we have any prayer requests on this side. Sister Beth. I saw Sister Rebecca in here. Oh, okay. Okay, yes, Brother Lindell and Sister Flora, yes. I just remember my granddaughter who was traveling overseas <coughs> and the youth of her country. Yes. Yes, sweetheart. His dog? Oh, yes. I, oh, sweetheart, we will remember your dog. I just had, I'm a grand, I had grand puppies. <laughs> yes, so I understand, and my son was praying for his dog as well, so I totally understand, sweetheart. And you know, it's so amazing that. God hears those prayers, yeah. and he answers them. Yeah. So we thank you for your request. And any on this side? Unspoken. He only hears. He's willing, and he's able. So when we pray, we know who we're praying to. That's right. We know what he has done. We know what he's capable of doing. He's the God of yesterday, today, and forevermore. So be encouraged. Be uplifted, be inspired. We're going to the God of heaven and earth. Amen. And that's who we're making our petitions and our requests known. And we're doing something that he told us to do. We're praying and we're bringing it to him. So I'm going to ask you to please stand. And I'm going to ask Sister Valerie if she could raise her voice. And remember these prayer requests, please. Most righteous and eternal Father, we thank you, O God, for this Yes. We thank you for your mercy, Lord. We thank yes. you for your grace. We thank you, Lord, that we can come in this fashion to lift you up and to worship you. Yes. Mighty God, as we you hear all the requests, Lord. There are so much. I cannot remember all, but God, you know each yes. and every one yes. here, Lord. You know a heart that is bleeding within us. God, you know how we are feeling. Yes. God, you say you're touched by the feeling of our infirmities. You, so God, we put it yes. all at your feet because he's our father yes. and you promise us that you will never leave us yes. nor forsake us. Yes. And you tell us another time that in time of trouble, you yes. are our very present yes. help. Yes. So Lord of heaven, we are asking the Lord to intervene in each and every request yes. that I mentioned here tonight. Yes. Every uplifting and as our brother always yes. said, is a need. And God, you know, Lord Jesus, you know the uplifting hand, you know the heart, you know the people there by name and nature. Oh, mighty God, we saw him a big mighty God, even our hairs our numbers and our health yes. by this God. Yes. So we know that we are serving a supreme God. Yes. We know everything. Yes. So Father God, we are putting it at your footstool tonight and asking you to take over Lord yes. Jesus. Take over mighty God. Heal. Deliver. God, bring Peace within you know, your people, them soul that is trouble. God, you know the soul and the heart and the mind. You know our feeling tonight, mighty God. So we are asking the Lord that you may come and comfort your people. Breathe upon your people, Lord Jesus. Put your arms around them, my God. You know each and every one from the pulpit to the pro. Yes. So God, I pray, Lord Jesus, those that in the room mention anything, you know the heart of them. So God, we are asking the Lord that you may intervene tonight. Yes. and take over. God, yes. we thank you for tonight's service yes. and what is about the testimony, mighty God. You know so many testimony, Lord Jesus. But God, we're glad to know that by this testimony, Lord, we know that there is a God that delivers. There is a God that yes. intervenes. And there is a God that always Amen. at time. So, yes. Father God, we're asking the Lord Jesus to have your way to this service. 
have your way with the people them almighty oh, god those that are mourning their loved ones yes. those that oh god in a bed of affliction though god that don't know what to do god almighty you know the troubles of our hearts oh god you know within so we put it at in your hand and tell you to have your way tonight bless each one tonight lord yes. bless everyone that is in here that yes. those that are online listening bless them also yes. so god we put everything in and i will tell you thanks thank you for hearing us thank you for delivering yes. Yes. thank you for healing yes. through your precious blood in jesus name i pray amen amen, amen. amen. At this time, we're going to have a group song by Brother David and others. Is 
children should get together, for we need Jesus now more than ever, for we need, yes, we need Jesus now more than ever. song yes we need Jesus more than ever I need him more today than I did yesterday and you know he put their lives back together and another song where they say pick up the broken pieces and take them to the Lord only Jesus blood can give protection and then we know we will have everything church I had nothing but heartache and trouble I was seeking for fortune and peace I had nothing
Maxine for that beautiful song. Yes, we can have everything. And you know, when we have Christ, we can be in an unhappy situation, but still have joy within our soul because we know that we have the Lord that we can go to and he will work things out in his time and his own way. So we thank God that yes, when we have him, we do have everything. At this time, we'll have another testimony by Sister Miriam. And Sister Miriam has some seniors in her life as well. And I just want to say thank you, Sister Miriam, you know, for what you're doing with the seniors that are in your life. And, you know, sometimes you, you, you can feel unappreciated and unnoticed. But I just want to remind you tonight, and Sister Karina as well, God sees. God knows. He appreciates what you're doing. And even though you may not get any reward here, you have that hope and you know that you continue to do good because in due time you will reap if you faint not. And after Sister Miriam, we'll have a group song, Help is on the way. Oh no, not a group song, the Universal Gospel Singers, Sister Miriam. My testimony is not going to be very long, but giving God thanks. But before I do that, I just want to say bienvenido a Church of God Universal to my family. Um, my cousins and my cousin's wife just came in from Cuba. So welcome to Church of God Universal. They understand very little, but they understood that. <laughs> my testimony is on God's comfort. Praise God, I am free from the guilt I carry. No freedom, no hope in this life without Jesus. But praise God for the wisdom that he gave me to surrender my life over to him 16 years ago. And Sister Karen, I think you and I were in that group that we got saved 16 years ago, May 2007. When I heard about the truth in his word and the preached word, I became aware of how much I am missing in my life. Since I have given my life to Jesus, I have gone through trials, persecution from my very own, pain, bereavement, but thank God he's always there to comfort and strengthen me. I would say that none of these things is going to turn me away or move me because I have made up my mind that heaven is a place I must go when I close my eyes in death. I've always made plans to travel here, there, and everywhere. But this one thing I know for sure, I don't want to miss this journey. This is a beautiful world God created, but one can only try to imagine what heaven will be like. And it should make us more determined to make that our destination. After all, God's promises are true, and he has told us about it in his word. If we believe the Bible, it should be easy to believe that Jesus has gone to prepare a place for us, and where he is, we shall be with him in eternity. No more problems, suffering, worries, pain, anxiety, bills. Ah, it will be bliss. Praise God just to be in his presence forever. Walking with the Lord can be a challenge at times, but we never must be ashamed of the gospel. But if you always do what is right, the God of peace shall be with you. So let's be confident that the God will always have your back when we defend the gospel for the purpose of promoting Jesus to the world. Do you think that he will leave you floundering? No way. He's going to get the glory because you will be doing his will as he commanded us in Matthew 28, 18 to 20, as he said, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. I am so glad of salvation's plan and what it truly means. Thank God for Jesus Christ. 
safety, comfort, direction, and empowerment. But first, comfort. When earth has no balm for our healing, Jesus, in Jesus we can find comfort and rest. Safety. We can hide under his wings, sheltered and protected. When we rest in Jesus, we are safe evermore. Direction. All the way my Savior will lead me through this life. He will be my guide. Amen. Empowerment. Praise God for the Holy Spirit who will lead you and keep you and give you boldness to stand for truth and righteousness. Yeah. And most of all, to let the world know that Jesus loves me, loves you, and loves everyone. Rely on the Spirit of God and not self, and you'll be surprised at what you can do for the glory of God. When you have Jesus, you have everything. Um, you will receive, sorry, and part, it's what you will receive when you are part of the body of Christ and led by the Holy Spirit. My prayer for each and every one of you who has not tried Jesus, to be smart and use wisdom to acknowledge your need of salvation and ask our Lord Jesus Christ to come into your life and make you anew. We only have one eternity-bound soul. We must take care of that soul. We have to give an account for everything that we do in life. Everything, our very thoughts, our actions, our words. We are here for a purpose. God has made us for his glory, to give him glory. So we ought to think about our one eternity-bound soul. So as we go through... This journey, let us hold our hands in Jesus' hands and never let go because heaven is a wonderful place, but sin cannot enter there. So please pray for me as I continue to stay focused and strong in the Lord as I continue to pray for each and every one of you. Amen. Amen.
We're drawing close to the end of our service. And I don't really want to go in or ready to go yet. I don't know about you all, but I'm really blessed. And I'm so thankful for the Spirit of God that is here, that is so real, and the testimonies and the singing and everything. You know, God is faithful, and we thank him for his faithfulness. And Sister Miriam spoke about God's comfort and that God is always there. And I remember the scripture that says, yes, he's the friend that sticketh closer than a brother. And she said, you know, she doesn't want to miss. She must go to heaven. She doesn't want to, she doesn't want to miss it. And, you know, they have a saying that you die trying, you know. And God said he's always with us. And she spoke about him preparing a place for us. And I think it was last week, Sunday morning, with the Sunday school lesson, I commented on how I was encouraged because you read and you see things that these really magnificent buildings and structures and things that are man-made that you, you just can't imagine that man could make something like that. Beautiful, and you read it, so oh, it, it took 20 years, it took 14 years, it took three years, it took, and I even think about our very own Kamana Bay and how much years it has taken for it to be where it is and it's still developing. And then the scripture comes to mind, he has gone to prepare a place for us, and my whole inside light up, because I'm thinking, it's been 2,000 years. I can't imagine what this place is going to look like. I can't begin to fathom. And I get real excited because I try to picture it, and of course I can't picture it, but you, you think about it and you, and you get encouraged and you get inspired because these buildings and these islands and different things that man make, and it take them 14, 20, 25, 30 years, and it looks so beautiful, you begin to imagine, wow, I wonder what he's preparing for me and what it's going to look like. So we thank you for that. And... Yes, we have to rely on the Spirit of the Lord, and help is on the way. Thank you for that song, yes, you know. It doesn't help tomorrow if we give up today. We don't, you know, we don't give up today. We keep going on, even though the battle gets hot and things get rough. We continue going on, we continue holding on, we continue trusting him and obeying him and keeping our eyes and our mind focused on him, even when it doesn't make any sense. Even when we don't understand, we need to remember it's still okay to trust him. It's still okay to trust him. So thank you very much. At this time, we'll have our final testimony, which will be done by Sister Ava. And Sister Ava is fairly new to our congregation in Cayman. And Sister Ava, I'm so sorry. I don't know very much, so I can't give very much about you. But I love your smile, and you have a beautiful voice when you sing. And I'm so thankful that you're a part of the family of God, and you're my sister. Good evening, church. Thank you, Sister Latasha. My testimony is uh, entitled, Trusted in God Because He Cares for Me. This might sound strange. Well, firstly, a disclaimer, I don't consider myself to be a boastful person, but tonight I just want to boast about God a little. And this might sound strange, but there have been many times when I felt like I didn't have a testimony. And I'm not sure where I got that idea from, that a testimony had to be the fact that God delivered you from something dire or drastic, or that I had to have gone hungry, or no money, etc., and then help would come my way. But I did not realize at the time, because I was young in my faith, and I didn't realize at the time that that was a testimony. The fact that I hadn't gone through all those things, you know, God has truly been good. Things have not always gone my way, how I wanted it to. But I have to learn to trust God. I stand before you tonight to share my testimony of how trusting in God has transformed my life and it brought me a deep sense of comfort. Sister Miriam spoke about comfort, guidance, and assurance. In my journey, I've come to realize that God's care for me is unwavering and that placing my trust in him has been the key to finding peace amidst life challenges. There have been moments when I felt overwhelmed, by the burdens and uncertainty, uncertainties that life often presents. And it appeared as if the world around me was just spiraling out of control, leaving me anxious, yes, Sister Miriam, extremely anxious and lost, anxious to the point where I, I would start to feel hot and cold, and my heart would just start to flutter. But it was during those very moments that I turned my gaze towards God, 
seeking solace and understanding. So in my search for answers, I discovered that God's care for me is not, a, is not distant or abstract. It's not an abstract concept, but a tangible reality. I can't touch it. I learned that he's not only the creator of the universe, but a compassionate father who intimately knows me and loves me. His care extends to every aspect of my life, from the big decisions like moving to Cayman that shape my future, to the smallest details that bring me joy. So I'll share an incident that just blew my mind about God's care and how he shows up just in time. And bear with me as I tell the story. In the Easter, I'd planned on going home to visit my family. So the ticket to return to Jamaica was booked even before I came to Cayman. So while I was in Cayman, as the Easter holidays were approaching, I decided to purchase a return ticket from Jamaica back to Cayman, months before April, because I knew if I waited until the last minute, it would have been more than what I really could afford to pay for a ticket. So I was set and ready for my return on, to go to Jamaica and come back on April 13, way before school had started to get back myself situated. But I had not factored in the fact that my grand-aunt, who's my mother's aunt, would have passed. And she was more like her mother after her mother passed, so she was really our grandmother. And I wanted to be at that funeral, and I hoped that it would have fallen in the time when I was there. So the date was set, but for the 16th of April, and I started to feel anxious. So I went on Cayman Airways site, website to see if there was a flight from Sunday to Kingston because I had school the, the, the Monday, and, or even from Montego Bay, but there was none. The only flight from Kingston was a Saturday afternoon, and that was full. So there was none from Mo Bay because flights only leave Montego Bay apparently on special occasions or on promotions, I'm not sure why, but Montego Bay is closer to where I live in St. Anne, so I would have preferred that, but there was no flight from Montego Bay. And I called the airline and, you know, to see if they, there were any flights, but they said no, not until July. So I called mommy and I told her, mommy, there was no flight, and if I were to have traveled through Miami, that would have been even more expensive, and there would have been a next day layover. So school would have started on the Monday, and being new to the job, I didn't want to not show up, even though it was for a funeral. My mother said to me, you don't worry. You are going to pray about it, and the Lord is going to send a plane for you. When she said that, I laughed, because I was like, the Lord is going to send a whole plane for me. <laughs> so I just thought that was just more than presumptuous faith. But I left Cayman knowing that something was going to work out, and, you know, we are going to pray about it. So while I was in Jamaica, my mom and I went to the travel agency and see if we could secure a flight. So when we went to the travel agent, she said, oh, there's a flight um, to Cayman, but it's for 50000 Jamaican dollars. So I said, when I told mommy, she said, no, don't buy it. We're going home. So we were in the car park, and we started to, well, I called Cayman Airways, because I was like, no, this, is, this can't be true. When I called, the, travel, the customer rep said, no, there's no flight. So I was like, all right. So we went home. And I started to search myself, search on a different platform, not on Cayman anyways. And I saw that there was a flight for Cayman, so I was confused. And I said to mommy, but there's a flight, and the cost for this flight is less than what I would have paid at the travel agency. And mommy said, buy it. So I bought it, got the confirmation, everything, still was in disbelief, so I called Cayman anyways again. And uh, no, before I called Cayman anyways, I called the company, the travel company, and they said, yes, it's valid. So I called Cayman anyways, and that's when they said, Oh, we've just decided to send a plane to Montego Bay. No other reason was given. So my takeaway from that was that God sent a plane for me. <laughs> and would you believe I got an entire row for myself? There were only about 15 or less persons on the plane. Now, would they send a plane for just 15 people? But God, I give all credit to God because he is the author and finisher of our faith, and we just have to trust him. So trusting in God has taught me to sur surrender my worries and anxieties into his capable hands. It has allowed me to release the burden of trying to control every outcome and instead just find comfort in, just find comfort in the knowledge that God's plans for me are perfect. Even when life takes unexpected turns, I have learned to lead on his promises, knowing that he is working all things together for my good. Bear with me, I'm coming down. Moreover, trusting in God has brought me a sense of peace. A peace that surpasses all understanding. You know, sometimes people don't even understand it. But it's a peace that enables me to navigate the storms of life. 
with a steadfast heart and, on, and an unwavering faith. I've come to understand that God's care for me is not dependent on my circumstances, but is constant regardless of what I may be facing. Through trusting in God, I've witnessed his faithfulness time and time again. He has provided for my needs when I thought all hope was lost. He has guided me through challenging situations, given me wisdom and discernment. And in moments of weakness, he has given me strength to persevere and overcome. Trusting in God has not shielded me from trials. It's almost as if I go through more trials as a child of God. But it has not prevented me from pain, but it has allowed me to find hope in the midst of adversity. It has taught me to look beyond my immediate circumstances and fix my eyes on the eternal promises that God has given. His care for me has been a constant source of encouragement, reminding me that I'm never alone. So to conclude my testimony, my very long testimony, I want to encourage each one of us to place our trust in God. He cares for us in ways that surpass human understanding, like sending a whole plane for me. (laughs) His love is unconditional, his faithfulness unwavering. When we surrender our worries and fears to him, we will find peace, we will find guidance and assurance that we're never alone on this journey of life. Trust in God because he cares for you. I know it's easier said than done, but we have to just start somewhere. Let's start by trusting, just as he cared for me and still is. So let us, as Peter admonishes us, Cast all our cares upon him because he cares for us. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sister Ava, for that beautiful testimony. Yes, trusting in God because he cares for us. Yes. And sometimes we think, yeah, we don't have a testimony because something major hasn't happened, you know. And she spoke about God caring about the big and the small details in her life. God cares. And I can testify to that. I remember uh, some time ago I was dealing with something and I was talking to Brother Dwayne. And, and he said, Sister Latasha, pray about it. And I said, pray? I can't bother God with that because it was something very small and very minute. I'm like, he got bigger things to deal with. And he looked me straight in the eye and he said, Sister Latasha, God cares about every detail of your life even to the smallest, and that, and I've never forgotten that. So yeah, I bring everything to the Lord. And I, I'm, I'm convinced, sometimes he looks down and he says, Sister Latasha, you again? When you, go, when, when you go get it, you know, but I'm so thankful. He loves me and I can take everything to him. And we thank God. And yes, Sister Ava, Brother James has us on board flight 2023. So your story about Easter fits well with the journey that we're on for 2023. At this time, we're going to have Sister Tasha Shun, Sister Ava, do a duet for us. Upon the land or on the rolling sea, for come what may, from day to day, my heavenly Father watches over me. I trust in God. I know he cares for me On mountain bleak or on the stormy sea Though billows roll, he keeps my soul My heavenly Father watches over me 
reach the rose, an object of his care. He guides the eagle through the pathless air, and surely, and surely, remembers me. Remembers me. My heavenly Father watches over me. I trust in God. I know He cares for me. On mountain bleak or on the stormy sea, though billows roll, He my soul, my heavenly Father watches over me. I trust in God, for in the lion's den, on battlefield or in the prison pen. Through praise or blame, through through flood or flame, my heavenly Father watches over me. I trust in God, I know He cares for me. On mountain bleak or on the stormy sea, though billows roll, He keeps my soul. My heavenly Father watches over me, though billows roll. He keeps my soul, my heavenly Father watches over me. We thank God that his eye is on the sparrow and he watches over us. Thank you for that beautiful song. Our, the choir will do our closing song at this time and then I'll do some closing remarks.
that brings us to the close of our service. And I have really been blessed. I don't know about you all and our online viewers. I have really been blessed by this service tonight and the testimonies and the way that God met with each and every one of us. Isn't very much more that I can say, you know, we heard about prayer and the importance of prayer in each testimony and the prayers of praying parents. And we heard about trust and the comfort of God and the peace that God gives and that God cares and that he is our refuge. We started out the service with a song saying, I have decided to follow Jesus. And I guess my question to you is tonight, have you decided? You still have chance. You're still here, you're still in your right mind. You're still breathing. We don't know the next few seconds. They're not, I don't want to go as far as tomorrow. We don't know. But you're here tonight and you don't know if you'll have another opportunity. So you, you ask yourself that question, have I decided? So we thank God for the service tonight and for each one that participated and for sharing their testimony. And what a fitting song to end with the choir, Standing Fast. Yes, we've decided and we need to make sure we continue to stand fast. And I have a little quote here from Sir James M. Barry that says, those who bring sunshine into the lives of others cannot keep it from themselves. So each of you that share your testimony tonight, make sure you keep it as well and you feel strong in the Lord and in the power of his might as you go forth this week. Sometimes it's a song that keeps us through the week, a scripture or something that the Lord does for us that keeps us through the week. You know, We don't know what the week holds, but we know who holds the week. Amen. And we thank God for that. So I don't have too much more to say. I think I said more than enough. And I'm going to call Brother Ray at this time. He has something that he wants to share with us. Church, I realize it's late, but a miracle happened this morning that the church doesn't know about. Brother Dwayne and I was going up to the door when a young lady stopped us and asked for prayer for her back. I asked Brother Horace, who was still on the platform, to join us in the room for prayer. Well, Brother Dwayne anointed her. No, as a matter of fact, I anointed her, and Brother Dwayne prayed for her. Well, let me tell you, church, a miracle happened. She was so convicted from the prayer of healing that she got saved. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. She's none other but my friend, Dana. Sister Dana, we're happy to have you. Amen. Truth for youth, truth for youth has brought another child home. And I want you to know that the church is here to encourage you, Sister Dana. You and I have had many, many chats about you being prepared and getting ready. You're almost there, you should tell me. But thank the Lord this morning. Praise the Lord. I must tell you, it was the best. It, it was such a, a, a sweet spirit in that room this morning, Brother Dwayne and I, and Brother, Brother Horace. It was amazing. Sister Donna, we're here for you. The Lord has changed your life, and I'm happy you're here to, tonight to witness these testimonies of what God has done for all of us. Church, let us sing. There's a new name written down, please. Because there's a new name, Sister Donna, welcome to the Church of God. Welcome to God's people. Church, encourage this Adana, please, when you get a chance. That's Sister Dorothy's daughter. There's a new name written down in glory.
God thanks throughout the week. And we be still and remember that He yes. is God and He yes. will be exalted. Yes. I'd like to ask Sister Ganita if she'd come to the podium, please, and dismiss the service in prayer. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let us pray, church. For as much that we have gone through tonight, we are blessed. Amen. Your soul should be blessed. You should be revived of all that we have went through tonight. What we've heard. The Spirit of God with us. And his word tells us that he adds to his church daily. Praise God. Yes, Brother Ray, one more truth for you. Yes, the scripture says in Proverbs that we're to train them up in a way they should go when they're older. Here we are. We keep seeing the, the results of this coming over and over. And as Sister Karen said, don't stop praying. One by one, they shall all come back to the fold. Glory be to God for great things he has done for us. Let us pray. Almighty God, it is indeed with good hearts and joyful hearts tonight that we say thank you. Thank you, oh God, for the plan of salvation that you have given your people, Lord. Thank you for your Holy Spirit meeting with us in a mark way tonight. Lord, we give you thanks because we know that the angels in heaven are rejoicing over Sister Dana that has come home. Lord, and we as a church will rejoice tonight, Lord. Help us to continue to rally around her, dear God, and help to help her walk this walk of faith. For we all want to make it this journey home together. Continue to bless us, Lord. Those that prepared the service tonight, Lord. Continue to bless them and use them in a mighty way. Sister Karen and the others that helped her. Lord, we thank you. For indeed, it was good for us to have been here tonight. For we are, our lives has been enriched. Continue to abide with us now. Dismiss us with heaven's richest blessings and bring us back again at our next appointed service. These things we ask in no other name but the name of your son, Jesus Christ. And we all say, Amen. Amen. Amen.